Good morning, my beautiful diamonds. It's Sheila True Love here with you this fine. Um, what is today? It's Wednesday, May 1st. May 1st. You know, I was, um, <clears throat> I'm up early this morning. It's like 3 o'clock a.m. And I was just thinking about how wonderful it feels when you have adult children who have appreciation for you and especially if you were a single mother and you worked really hard, especially when you had certain situations and certain circumstances. And when you have children who really, really grow up to appreciate that. I have a clip here. Uh, well, actually, it's uh, my son's YouTube channel. And he is expressing how much appreciation he has for me. And for all the single mothers who are especially trying to raise male children. Let me share this with you. And this just, I mean, it really had me crying at home when I was looking at it. And then I thought about it while I was in my office and it had me crying also. But you know that there's such a thing called tears of joy. And this video brought me so much joy. Allow me, please, to share this with you. Here is my son. And I had to do this video. You know, I had to come home and do this video as a thank you to my mother. You know, I was thinking about my mother and how she has made so many different sacrifices for me growing up. You know, I have been thinking about how she was never really able to lean into her feminine energy because she was so busy trying to protect me. You know, truth be told, growing up, I was never taught how to protect myself. You know, and personally, I feel it's a father's job to teach his son how to defend himself, how to protect himself. I was never taught how to do that. I had to learn that through other channels, namely women. Women in my life has, have always tried to teach me how to protect myself, but it's also came from the lens of a woman, from a woman's mindset, a woman's, a woman's perspective. You know, I, I needed a man's perspective on how to protect myself, and I really never got that. I never got the male perspective on how to defend or protect myself. And so there are so many of us fatherless boys growing up out here unprotected. You know, when I think about gay men who do not have fathers, who never had a father, they oftentimes put themselves in harm's way, having unprotected sex, putting themselves out there, and it's leading to their premature death through AIDS and HIV. They never learn how to protect themselves early. And so when they go into these relationships with other men, all they've learned was how to give themselves away. All they've learned was how, to, was how to put themselves at risk for the love of a man, you know? They never really learn how to defend and protect their own interests, you know? And so I have to reflect upon this. I, I really have to do this video because I see so many of us young boys out here, especially gay young boys, we don't know how to protect ourselves. And we don't know how to protect ourselves because our fathers were too busy chasing dragons. Our fathers were too busy chasing after other women. Our fathers were too busy chasing after every other thing except our protection. They didn't care about leaving us open. You know, open to, you know, and that's the thing. You know, when you grow up without a father, you're left open to so many different attacks. You know, people don't realize the damage, you know, fathers especially, they don't realize the damage that they do. You know, when you leave a home, you know, you may not be getting along with the mom, okay, but don't leave your kids. Don't leave your kids because when you leave your kid, what ends up happening is that they become, they become a target. You make your kid a target for abuse. You know, you make them a target for police. You make them a target for so many systems out here. We talk about the school to prison pipeline, right? We talk a lot about that. I wonder what is the percentage 
of kids who go from school to prison? What percentage of those kids never grew up with the father? I, I, without doing the research, without having the statistics on hand, I bet you that it's over maybe, I would say 80%, 80%. And I'm lowballing it, you know, but I know that quite frankly, having that access to a male figure is helpful, a positive male figure. And to me, it's just, this is why so many of our young boys and young girls are out here dying at the hands of other people and other men and other women because they don't know how to protect themselves. They never learned, you know? I was raised on love. I was raised on valuing education. I was raised on spirituality and the importance of spiritual food. I was not raised on boundaries. And my mother did her absolute best. And, you know, looking back, I have no, every, every situation that happened as a result, I let it go. My mother, I am so grateful for her. I really am because she tried her best to instill certain principles and to protect me, but she never really got a chance to lean into her own feminine energy. As I mentioned earlier, she was too busy out here trying to teach me how to defend myself as a young man, you know? And when you really think about that, how so many single moms out here, so many single moms out here do not have the benefit of a partner and they have to abandon their own nature they have to abandon their own nature as women trying to raise men children and trying to make sure that these men children are well adjusted are masculine but at the same time tender you know are strong but at the same time vulnerable Whew. mom i gotta say this to you if you are watching this video thank you I never really knew how hard you had it. I never really knew until this very moment. And I don't know what clicked, but something clicked. And it made me realize just how many sacrifices, just how much, just how much you love me. And also how many sacrifices you had to personally make that other people did not, didn't even know. Maybe you yourself didn't even know that you were making a sacrifice of your femininity in order to help me realize my own masculinity. Oh. When you realize that, when that hits you, huh, everything your mother ever did to you, everything, that, every argument, every disagreement, every issue has been obliterated, has been obliterated by grace and also insight Awareness and empathy. Empathy, insight, and awareness has lifted that curse of blaming your mom, blaming your this, blaming. Why did you to blame? My mother did the best that she could with what she knew. And knowing what I know now, I don't have a child right now, you know? But knowing what I know now about what it means to raise children, especially in a, in a world like this. Single moms out there, whew, you all are amazing. You are amazing and I have to praise you. I have to celebrate you because if, if no one told you today, you are amazing. You are amazing and I hope that God continues to bless you. I hope that he lifts you up and he helps you. The scriptures say that God is definitely there for widows and fatherless children, you know? Those who are fatherless, those who don't have the benefit of a partner, of a partner of a, a father, you know? God is there for you. He's there for you. And I just had to put this message out there because it just never really occurred to me how many sacrifices my mom made. How many sacrifices and how many sacrifices she continues to make. And I'm thinking that right now I am an adult, right? Her job is done. I'm hoping that she can go back and reclaim her feminine energy.
You know, I'm hoping that she can actually lean into her softness, have an opportunity for a soft era, you know, a gentle era, and not always have to fight battles. Single moms always got to wage war. And then you wonder why they're hard. You wonder why they're not as genteel. You can't be, especially when you're raising boy children. You have to teach them the ways of this world because how society handles women versus how society handles men are two different things. You know, there's no compassion for the vulnerability of a man. We oftentimes say, yes, be more vulnerable. But when a man is vulnerable, he is belittled. He's emasculated. He is treated like a dog. So it's like trying to balance that act and always have all these plates up in the air. It's just a lot. It's a lot. And so, oh, I just want to say thank you to my mom. I really do for staying on the job, for sticking it out, raising two children on your own without the benefit of a partner, trying to teach and model femininity, while oftentimes having to leave your femininity in order to handle the crises that require a different approach, a more masculine approach. Having to battle patriarchy, trying to hold on to your femininity while also trying to battle patriarchy and trying to help your son's masculinity. Ay, Dios mío. Oy, oy, really? Oh, it's a lot. So I just have to, I had to do this video. And so single moms out there, I love you. Definitely you're doing your thing, you know? Um, this is just a video right now for single moms. Single dads, it's gonna be your turn someday. But you know, right now I have to give a shout out to single moms, you know, because they really, whew, there's something, there's something. So thank y'all for listening. I love y'all, and I hope you enjoy the rest of 2024. Peace, y'all. <laughs> Let me just get myself together. Like I said, every time I watch that video, it just brings me, you know, so many tears of joy because having to be a single parent, and like he said, he's going to give a shout out to the single fathers because there are some good men out here who are single fathers and who are doing their thing. And I'm not trying to take anything away from them. At the same time, you know, I I was uh, married before I had my children. I lost my virginity to my husband. I followed the rules, you know, and I still ended up a single baby mama, which that part was very upsetting for me. But, you know, and like my son said, there was a time when I had to step up and be the father. I had to put my femininity to the side and then I have to bring on my masculinity because what other choice did I have? Like I said, also, I, I had certain goals and there were certain things that I wanted for my children. And there were certain things that I felt, I felt was important when it came to being a parent. And with the help of Jehovah and Jesus Christ, I achieved everything, every single thing that I wanted for my children. And the first thing I wanted for my children was for them to be God fearing and to be on Jehovah and Jesus Christ team. Check. I wanted my children to be smart and educated. Both of them have their degrees. Check. I wanted my children to be very, very well spoken. As you see my son here, he is very articulate. Check. I wanted my children to have careers, not just the job. My daughter has a career. She's a registered nurse, getting ready to work on being a practitioner and going back to school for whatever else she wants to do. My son is a social worker, a counselor, and a therapist. <laughs> Check. Those are careers. And I wanted them to know how to take care of themselves in my absence. And like my son, you know, he brought it to your attention. I raised my children on love. 
learning how to be compassionate, learning how to be empathetic and know when to apply mercy and grace and kindness. And in the process of that, you know, we were raised, I raised my children as Jehovah's Witnesses. From the moment I pushed them out of my body, I pushed them right in the arms of Jehovah and Jesus Christ. But in the process of doing that, you know, they were surrounded in a, around people who were a certain way. And then when they went out into the real world, coming up out of that Jehovah Witness bubble, <laughs> child, please. These people tried to eat us alive. Even when I came up out of that organization, people tried to eat me alive. But Jehovah God and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit was right there, baby, watching over us to make sure that this world didn't devour us. I also focused when it came to my children on their education and above all things, above all things, spirituality. Actually, I raised them religiously with spirituality. But forget the religion part, but the spirituality, that is the most important thing in the world you can raise your children with. And like he said, I tried to be in my feminine energy, but there was times when I couldn't. I just couldn't do it. You know, but you'll notice uh, for the single mothers out there who are putting in the work, don't give up. And I know you have a lot of children who feel that their parents are toxic. My parents are no good. My parents are MFers or B-I-T-C-H. Don't do that. Please don't do that, adult children. Because as the scriptures say, if you want things to go well for you in life and you want your days on this earth to prove to be long, Honor and respect your parents. And what does it mean to honor? It means to treat your parents like royalty. You see, I wore this crown here because my son has always, always treated me like a queen. My daughter and I, we are working through some things. We're finally back to speaking to each other again after years of, oh, please. It's been a challenge. But as your children start to mature and they start to gain more insight and empathy and like my sense, sunset awareness, when they start to mature and gain this awareness to see that it's not as easy as they thought it would be, then they will show some appreciation and have some gratitude. I remember having a conversation with my daughter and she said, Mom, you know, I realize there's something that I really, really need to work on. She said, I need to work on having gratitude and appreciation. Because she sees in those areas, she's very, very lacking. But you know, that's the importance of being very understanding and, and having compassion. And, you know, like I said, I, I, I'm fighting hard with my daughter. I'm fighting hard. Not to lose my daughter. And I will fight until I'm dead in my coffin. Yes, I will. But I, I, I don't beat myself up too much for a lot of things. Because what people don't realize is everything is not about nurturing. In fact, you have several psychiatrists who will argue. And it's still up for debate that it's about your nature. Like, you can't change a person's nature. If it's in your child's nature to be stubborn, materialistic, rebellious, hard-headed, that has nothing to do with how the parent raised that child. Now, I've done my research because you know how, Sheila True Love, I like to come at you with the facts. And there are several psychiatrists. I'm not talking about people who don't have a PhD behind their name or an MD behind their name, but many psychiatrists are debating whether it's nature or nurturing that cause a person to develop into who they are. And the psychiatrists that believe very strongly that it's based on your nature. Okay. This has been a long standing controversy in the field of psychology, psychiatry and psychology. Now the first psychiatrist who believes that it is a person's nature is Thomas 
Bouchard, B-O-U-C-H-A-R-D. Now, he believes that 60% of a person's personality and behavior is based on their nature. And then you have Robert Plowman, and he's a very prominent behavioral uh, geneticist. He believes that it's genetics also. And then there's Steven Pinker. He's a cognitive psychologist, a psychologist. And then you have Daniel Siegel. He's a clinical professor of psychology. And he says human behavior and development is basically based on your genetics. And then there's Eric Kendall. He's a Nobel uh, neurologist and a sci sci neuroscientist. And he has a firm belief that people are going to turn out to who they are based on their genetics. And then you have Irving Gottsman, G-O-T-T-E-S-M-A-N. He's a psychiatric gen uh, geneticist. Now you have to understand, this is not to mention the whole list of people who are psychiatrists and researchers that they believe strongly that it's based on a person's nature versus their nurturing. Because no matter how good a parent may be or how hard they may try, you have some children who are just not going to turn out good. Now, and I know you have a lot of people who say that their mother is toxic and she's, uh, we don't get along. But then where I messed up in my head is how is it that you have so many, and, and I'm speaking to the women out here, you could put up with that toxic husband. This is a man who has lied to you, cheated on you, who has abused you, totally disrespect you, and you could put up with all of his toxicity, but let it be your mother or let it be one of your family members, and I'm talking about your blood, your flesh and blood, and you have no problem throwing them to the wayside. You will throw them away faster than you can smell it. But you can put up with all of the, the man's toxicity. Now you have some children who would like to blame the parent where well, the reason why they're putting up with this man's toxicity is because they learned it from their parents were toxic. No, baby. You're in the driver's seat of your life. You're in charge of your life now. Are those toxic things happening to you now? No, it's not. You know right from wrong. Now, unless you're mentally challenged or you have like a mental retardation issue, then you can't use that as an excuse. But you have a lot of these children, they want to blame their parents constantly so that they don't have to take accountability for the choices and the decisions that they made. And they have to come to realize, guess what? You're not perfect either. Just like your parents are not perfect. And when people, when these adult children have to come to that awareness and that realization, not all children are going to be loving about it and kind about it. Like my son, when he finally is waking up into his maturity and he has more and more insight and he's seeing how the real world works. Now he's starting to see. And instead of him saying, well, I'm like that because my mother, because no, no, no. I was harder on my son. Let me tell you the truth. I was harder on my son than I was on my daughter. He left home at the age of 33. My daughter left home when she was 19. She was 20, 19, almost 20. You know? Jumped out of the frying pan right into the fire, whatever. But they both went through a lot of trials and tribulations. We all went through it. I based a lot of the things on the situation and the circumstances that I was in. Did I do make all the right choices? No way. Not at all. I made numerous, numerous mistakes. And if I can go back and change those things, I most certainly would. But I can't. So now I have to apply Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 through 15. And I have to leave the past in the past so I can focus on making it to the finish line. And I have to start from where we are now. 
Like I said, <clears throat> I have no problem going into therapy with my children. Me and my son, we've been in and out. Oh my God, we had so many things to get through, honey. But he was willing to put in the work. He felt I was worth it. He felt, felt I was worth fighting for. When it comes to my daughter, we are working through it. We're trying to, you know, see things on the same page. But like what brought me a little bit of relief when it came to my daughter, she had to admit <clears throat> that she lacks appreciation. She lacks gratitude. So I'm sure as she matures and she has a son and a daughter, and now she's going to get a chance to see, but she's not a single parent. Okay. I'm not going to put all her business out there, but the thing is she's going to get a chance to see what it feels like to have your children not appreciate you, to have your children can't wait to get away from you, to have your children not spend time with you or, 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 or show you any kind of, you know, empathy. She's going through her trials and tribulations now. And I'm sure that as she goes through things, she's going to start to wake up more and more and more and realize that you can't keep blaming your parents for everything. You can't. And you know, there shouldn't be no debate whether it's nature versus nurturing because the Bible shows you that it is based on your uh, nature. And let me give you the examples, the prime examples. Cain and Abel raised in the same household, nurtured, nurtured the same way. And yet look at how one <clears throat> had God's favor and the other one didn't. Now you see that nature versus nurturing. And then what about Jacob and Esau? They were nurtured, loving, kind in the same household. But look at how each one turned out based on what? Based on their nature. One had God's favor. The other one didn't. That had nothing to do with how they were parented. That had everything to do with their nature. So just like people used to debate whether the earth was flat or round, the Bible already had the answer. There is no debate. The Bible already made it clear that the earth is like a circle. It's round. Finally, throughout history, it took them eons to figure that one out when all they had to do was pick up their Bible. So like I said, you have a lot of people on Soft White Underbelly. Check it out on YouTube. AML Films. And you have a lot of these people who came from amazing households. And look at how they still turned out. Nature versus nurturing. But again, I really appreciate my son uh, showing his appreciation. And he put it on a video for the whole world to see it. And that just, that just, oh my God, that is like the best gift, the best gift any child, adult child could give to their parents is to make a video and send it to your parents and let them see your facial expression and how much you brought so much joy to your parents' heart. And when you treat your parents with honor, honor means to treat them with high value, very high value. And you treat them with respect. The Bible says the first command, check this part out, with a promise. God promises you that things will go well for you. And your days on this earth will be long. Especially for those who believe in the paradise earth and they want to make it to the paradise, honey. Well, you better watch how you treat your parents. Twinkle, twinkle, twinkle.